And welcome back, Norma, watching Free Speech TV in Montgomery, Alabama. Hey, Norma, thanks for watching Free Speech TV. What's up? Hi, Tom. I'm totally off topic, but I felt like I had to get to you as soon as possible with this. On Tuesday night, we have city council meetings downtown, mm -hmm. and it was carried on the local news. Right. And they announced that Montgomery, along with two other cities, um, will be a pilot program for this new computerized swipe your driver's license to vote. I lost it at that point and didn't get the names of the other two cities because I don't want to dr swipe my driver's license into a computer that is owned by a company called ES&S &S out of Nebraska. Right. I've never heard of them. When you swipe your driver's license, <clears throat> the barcode has things on the back, and it includes your race, age, gender, physical description. It also contains your driver's record here in Alabama, and in some states it has criminal history, and in some states you can opt in with medical information for alerts. Right. I don't think that this company I've never heard of has a right to collect my information. I got on the I phone, agree. the city people were going, what? They passed me to county. County people started going, what? And passed me to the person in charge of absentee ballots. She sent me to the Secretary of State's office. Mm -hmm. Our Secretary of State, John Merrill, told me that this is the new way to vote, and it is a part of a national voter ID law, and that everybody would be voting this way. Oh, jeez. This is the new Republican way of making sure that people who are too old to drive, who might be concerned about Republicans destroying Social Security, won't be able to vote. That people who are too young to drive because they're they're in college and they you know they they don't need to drive so they don't have driver's licenses, um, and who might be concerned about college debt. Uh, will not be allowed to vote, and the people who are too poor to drive, people who live in inner cities, or who, who, who simply, you know, city dwellers who tend to be more liberal. Uh, I, for example, don't own a car. Um, I, I maintain a driver's license because I can, but, you know, if my income was, was substantially less than it is, you know, I'm, I might just abandon the driver's license because, hey, why, why, you know, why bother? And this is a way, this is another, you know, Republican strategy to make sure that those people who tend to vote Democratic because they're concerned about Social Security, or they're concerned about college educations, or they're concerned about the, the, the state of our cities, are not allowed to vote. Well, also, what bothers me is that when I was taking programming courses, we took something called Report Program Gen Generator, which is referred to as RPG. And we also had a course called BASIC. Mm. In these courses, you, you, what you're doing is creating statistical reports. Right. And so you can take this demographic information and sort it out as to who voted and whether the, what race, age, gender. And also, when you start messing with programming, it's very easy to change code. Right. And this made me think about who owns these electronic voting yeah. machines. ES who is in charge of the uh, programming? ES and S was started by... Uh, Todd Amundsen, as I recall, and his brother, two very conservative kind of right-wing rich guys in Nebraska, if my recollection is correct. I, I actually wrote several articles about this back in the early 2000s when the Help America Vote Act was being passed. You can uh, Google voting machines and, and my name, and you'll probably find them fairly easily. And they hired Chuck Hagel, who had been a right-wing talk show host, to be their first CEO, as I recall. And then Chuck Hagel ran for the Senate, you, and, and his machines were populating Nebraska. And surprise, surprise, he even won black districts. So I got a lot of problems with it, Norma.